Hey everyone, I've got a good game for you today. This is between Jonathan Rowson and Simon Williams. So they're both grandmasters and both incredibly strong players. And this game was actually played in the 2006 British Championships in Swansea. So you may have heard of Sam Williams, who does a lot of chess videos and has a lot of products out. But I doubt many of you have heard of Jonathan Rowson. He's actually a really strong Scottish Grandmaster and he won the British Championships in 2004, 2005 and 2006. But the incredible thing about the year 2006 is he actually defeated four Grandmasters. So in his final four games he actually won all four against the top Grandmaster opposition. And the first of these is against Simon Williams. So there is a bit of difference in the strength between these two Grandmasters. Rousham here was rated 2579, Williams was rated 2473. So that's about a 100 point difference. But when I was a junior player watching the British Championships, I felt like Rousham was just on another level compared to some of these GMs. Some people may argue that he won a lot of British Championships because Michael Adams or Nigel Shaw didn't enter, but he still is a great player. And you'll see in this game, he just plays good moves and solid chess. It's just ridiculous. So Rousham here is white, Sam Williams is black, and Rousham plays d4, Williams plays e6, and White plays knight to f3, and of course Williams plays f5. So getting into a classical Dutch stone wall, and he plays g3 from Rousen here, knight to f6 from Williams, bishop g2, and bishop e7 from Black. Both players castle, and Rousen plays c4, and knight to e4 from Williams, so getting his knight in the centre already, maybe preparing for an attack with g5, who knows. But Rousen plays queen to c2, and knight c6 from black. And here Rousen plays knight c3, so straight away trying to undermine this e4 knight and kick it away. So Williams captures on c3, and Rousen's got a choice to make now. He could capture with the b-pawn, and I reckon Williams would have attacked, so he probably would have played queen e8 here. And Rousen then could have played e4 and hacked into the center. And after f takes e4, queen takes, I reckon Williams would have played something like b6. And after bishop f4, bishop b7, uh, white's actually stands a bit better here. So the pawn on c7's attacked, but black could have an attack coming. So white does have to be careful. I think Ralston played a better move though. He just played queen takes c3. So it saves him from doubling his pawns. Here Williams played queen to e8, so preparing stuff like g5, maybe queen h5, his usual attacking systems. And again, I think Ralston has a choice to make here. Bishop g5 was actually regarded as a really strong move here. Because after bishop takes, knight takes. If something like queen g6, why can't just play something like knight to f3? And d5 is a major threat now, and it's really hard to stop. And the point is that the knight's going to jump into e5 after d5. So black's a bit uncoordinated here. It's not because he's got no black square bishop to stop this. And of course, if h6 in this position, the knight will just drop back to f3. After d6, White can now just advance with b4 and very quick with a4. And again, d5 is a big threat. It'll get into an interesting game here actually because I imagine Williams would play something like g5. So an attack on the king side where White would attack on the queen side. So it'd be a very exciting game actually. Instead of bishop g5 here though, Rauschen just played knight to e5 and putting pressure on this c6 knight with the bishop. If black captures here, just d takes and white's plan is simple just play rook to d1 and this bishop on g2 is an absolute monster if d6 white can actually play bishop to f4 and not capture on d6 if g5 white actually has a trick e takes d6 attacking the bishop and after c takes d6 white can play bishop d2 and i know i put a lot of arrows here but the plan is simple white could play either queen c1 or queen a3 and attack this g5 pawn and prepare bishop c3 and this g2 bishop again is a bit of a pest for black so here maybe that's why williams didn't capture the knight on e5 instead williams played knight d8 moving the knight back and preparing maybe c5 here but this is what i was impressed by rousen he just plays solid moves so here he just plays b4 and c5 is no longer a threat and after d6 rousen drops his knight back to d3 and Williams here plays a good move, bishop to f6, trying to get on this diagonal that the b-pawn's just opened up. But Rousen just calmly plays bishop to b2, so getting on the same diagonal. Black plays bishop d7, trying to develop, so the knight on d8 protects the pawn on b7 to allow this. 
And here I actually think White should have just advanced and just played b5. And they're in a very commanding position with a lot of space. If c6, just play a4. And if we move like c5, you can just play e3. And White's got a very nice setup here. If Black plays knight to f7, maybe preparing g5, White can play queen to b3. And the pawn on b7 and the pawn on e6 are looking a bit ropey at the moment. So if e5, White can play d takes e5, d takes e5, and jump in with knight c5. And Black's position doesn't look very good here to me. b7 pawn's under attack, and White's just going to play rook d1 at some point. So it looks very nice for White here, very comfortable. But Rousen didn't play b5 here. He dropped his queen back to d2. And I admire him for this move because it's just very solid. So he's just dropping the queen off this diagonal and protecting the b2 bishop. And I think William has struggled a bit here. I think he just thought he's going to attack now. He just plays g5, preparing f4 perhaps. But again, Rousen just plays solid moves. Just rook a1, developing his last rook pretty much and preparing e4. So Williams gets on with the attack, queen g6, so maybe preparing g4, h5, but Rousen now just plays e4, so strikes first, he plays into the centre. If black ignores this and just plays f4, which is a typical Williams move actually, uh, why can't you just take the pawn, and after g takes, just play king h1, and rook g1 is a major threat for black, and the queen is also threatening to take on f4 as well. So this would be no good for black, and this is what Williams avoided. He actually just took on e4 straight away with f takes. So it opens his rook on f8 up, but bishop takes e4, attacks the queen, and Williams is forced to retreat it to g7. And now I just want to take a moment to think what Rousen played here, because it's a very creative move. So I'll just give you five seconds, just I'll pause the video and see if you can think of a great move here. So in actual fact here, Rousen played the incredible move, knight to e5, which I think for it is very hard to see, because if d takes e5, d takes e5, so the pawn on e5 is attacking the bishop on f6, and the queen is threatening d7, but the point is that the bishop on f6 has to move somewhere, so if it drops back to e7, just queen takes d7, and if the bishop takes b4, rook d1, White's got this great bishop on e4, and attacking he's attacking these pawns on c7 and b7. But if the bishop captures on e5, just bishop takes e5, queen takes e5, and actually white has this good move, bishop takes h7 with check. After captures, rook captures, it's game over for black because the queen has just been lost. Now the reason I think this knight to e5 move is incredible is because it looks as though it doesn't actually do anything. If black just ignores it, what's the big problem? Well this is what Williams did, he just dropped his bishop back to e8. But the point is that white can now just play knight to g4, and the idea is clear. White wants to take off this f6 bishop, which is black's best piece at the moment. So black simply can't allow this, so he drops his bishop back to e7. But this allows d5 now, and the point is that bishop on b2 is attacking his queen on g7. So black's got to be very careful. The only option now is to just play e5, so block everything up. But now this bishop on e7 has become worthless all of a sudden. Pawn on e5 blocks it in, and the pawn on g5 blocks it in. So this is what I mean by incredible play from Rousen. Just playing good moves and forcing black into playing bad ones. In the game I think Rousen should have probably played knight to e3 now. After bishop g6, he can play f3. And black's struggling for moves now. If like b6, white could just play bishop c3 and stop ideas like a5. After king h8, just play queen c2. And that bishop on e7 is just locked in. And white's got a very comfortable position. And the knight on d8 is also struggling for moves here. Here though, instead of knight to e3, Rousen plays king h1. So getting his king to safety. And Williams plays bishop to d7, attacking his knight. And now Rousen drops his knight back to e3. Williams now plays g4, so hoping to stop ideas like h4 and f4. But actually here, white could actually play h4. Because if black captures, white can play f4, and the pawn on e5 is actually pinned by this bishop. And if move like knight to f7, just play bishop to f5. And black's either got to drop the bishop back to e8, or the bishop's got to capture on f5, and the knight will just jump into f5, and black's in a very bad position. 
Here though, Ralston played a very strong move again though, just played queen to e2. Preparing ideas like f3, maybe retreat the bishop back to b1 at some point. And also double attacking this g4 pawn. So finally Williams attacks on the other side of the board, he plays a5 here. But Ralston just plays b5, so just ignores it. And Williams actually blocks the position up here, he plays b6. I think this is a decent move because he's at, wants to play knight to b7 and knight to c5 where it will be uncontested. But it's too little too late. Rouson could have actually struck really quickly here with f4. And again that pawn on e5 is pinned. But if black captures an f3 with g takes f3. If rook captures, rook captures, queen takes. After knight to f7, bishop to f5, black's got some thinking to do. So obviously black can't capture this bishop on f5 due to knight takes f5. Because this will just demolish black. So bishop e8. If bishop e, then there's bishop e6, king h8, and white can play knight to f5, and it's just devastating for black. If queen f6 to protect the bishop, simple move like queen g2 prepares rook to f1, and frankly black's in a terrible position right now, and it's really hard to see what you could do. So definitely black doesn't want this type of position, so maybe Rouston should have played f4 here. Instead though, Rouston plays h3, getting rid of this g4 pawn. Williams now plays queen h6, so pinning the pawn against the king, but now just h4. So this allows white to gain some more space and stop bishop g5 ideas. Williams here plays queen h5, so blocking up the position. I'm guessing he's hoping to try and get his knight to c5 in time. But here Rouson just plays a good move, he plays f3. So black's got a decision to make right now. I had a look and there's no sacrifices here for black. If bishop takes h4, White can just take on g4, attacking the queen. And after queen g5, captures, captures, queen h2, everything's safe as houses, and black's literally got no attack. So there are no sacrifices in this position for black. So black is actually forced to take on f3. And Rouson here just plays rook takes f3, and a trade occurs. Rook takes, bishop takes. The queen's forced to g6, attacking g3, but not really because rook g1 is always on the cards. But again, Rouson comes up with a very clever move now. I wonder if you can spot it. I thought this is really clever. So here Rouson now just plays another clever move. Bishop takes e5, winning a pawn. And if black just ignores this with like knight b7, trying to get to c5, white's attack's devastating. He just plays h5, after queen f7, you can play bishop g4 now, attacking the bishop on d7. So if d takes e5, white can capture on d7. And after knight c5, rook f1, these are just example moves now. Queen g7, white can play bishop e6 ideas. After knight takes, d takes, rook f8. King g2, rook takes, queen takes. As you'll see, every smoke's cleared and white's just got a one position. So white's actually, um, is he a pawn up? A pawn up. And preparing moves like knight d5 and knight to f5. So after bishop takes e5 from Rouson, black can't ignore this. So this, for this reason Williams takes on an e5 and actually loses the exchange. Because d6 comes straight in. So attacking this bishop on e7 and also attacking this rook on a8. If bishop takes d6, white can play bishop takes a8. And if e4, knight to f1 just covers everything and white's just the exchange up with a good position. In this position though, Williams plays e4 trying to complicate matters, attacking the bishop, but white calmly takes on e7, attacking the knight on d8. If e takes f3, queen takes f3, and again the knight on d8 is attacked and the rook on a8 is, and if knight c6 to block, just b takes c6 wins easily with bishop takes and white can actually block this with knight d5 and again white's got a very lovely position and it's resignable for black actually here here though knight f7 is played by williams trying to hold on but well, bishop h5 comes from rouson attacking the queen queen e6 maybe trying to play queen to h3 but now just bishop g4 and here the last move actually is a bit bizarre bishop c8 but this is actually resignable here for black. So after bishop c8 obviously Ralston will just take the queen off and that will be game over. 
But in this position, Williams can't really defend this d7 bishop, even if like queen d6, white plays rook d1, and the bishop's going to get eaten up on d7. So uh, yeah, Williams is probably correct to resign. So I think this game is just a perfect example of white just played solid moves, solid good moves, and found this knight to e5 idea. And it's not even winning yet, it just plays bishop to e8 and knight g4. But after this move, black starts to become really under pressure because the dark squares belong to white at this point. So after bishop e7, d5, e5, king h1. After bishop d7, knight to e3, white's just got two very strong bishops aiming at the king side and black's bishops aren't exactly doing very much and pointing in not very decent directions, especially the e7 bishop. And after Rousson won this game, he went on to win three other games to win the British Championships in 2006. I think it will be worthwhile to go through those games as well in the future. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this chess video. Please drop a like and subscribe if you did enjoy the video, and I'll see you next time.